Clinical psychologist Dr. Stephen Ragusia is back with us this morning. Now, last week he talked with us about love and marriage. He also brought up the book The Prophet. Well, this morning we're going to pick back up the topic on The Prophet and we're going to learn about the book's philosophy on children. Dr. Ragusia, thank you for being back here with me today. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right, Dr. Ragusia, what is Cahil Gibran's philosophy on children? Well, to remind the viewers, uh, Kiel Gabran is, uh, he was a Lebanese mystic, and um, he wrote this book in 19, well, it was first published in 1923, and it's currently in its 148th printing. Um, so it's a very popular book that has endured the test of time, and I really encourage people to buy it. Um, you can get it for your Kindle, too, but I don't, I don't think the illustrations come off as well. Um, on the Kindle as they do in, in this particular edition. But um, uh, in the book, he talks about the various aspects of life that are important, and one of the things that he talks about is children. And um, the, the premise of the book is that a, a wise man comes to town, and as he's about to leave, the population talks with him and asks him questions. Um, and um, uh, on this particular subject, the book says, and a woman who held a babe against her bosom said, speak to us of children. And he said, your children are not your children. They are the sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, yet they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts, for they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls. For their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you. For life goes not backward, nor tarries with yesterday. You are the bows from which your children as living arrows are sent forth. The archer sees the mark upon the path of the infinite, and he bends you with his might that his arrows may go swift and far. Let your bending in the archer's hand be for gladness, for even as he loves the arrow that flies, so he loves also the bow that is stable. I like his philosophy on children. Now, it's said in there, don't try and make your children like you, but isn't it true, Dr. Ragusia, that we always end up saying at one point in our lives, I've turned into my mother, or I've <laughs> turned into my father. <laughs> well. The old, say, the old adage that the apple doesn't fall far from the tree is pretty accurate most of the time. Not always, but most often. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's for a lot of different reasons, you know. Um, one of the things that's true is, is that we are the product of our parents' genetics. And as a result, we get a head start in life based upon who they were, are, and therefore what we're going to be to a large extent. Um, on the other hand, our decision making also plays a role in who we are and how we live our lives. And there is such a thing as free will. Um, now that free will is based to some extent on values and on past experience. Um, for most of our early life, our experience is with our families. That's why, you know, the stereotypical cartoons of the, the psychotherapist sitting behind a patient with a pad and pencil going, tell me about your mother and your father. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and, and the reason for that is because during those first four or five years of life, we learn the basic rules of the universe. Mm -hmm. uh, we learn that it tastes good to eat a banana and tastes bad to poke ourselves in the eye with that same piece of fruit. Mm -hmm. um, and um, as we're learning about the rules of the universe, we're also learning about interpersonal rules, and we learn that from our families, and that's mm -hmm. mostly our mother and father. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of who we are from our parents, um, and that's the answer to your question. Mm -hmm. But everybody's unique, and everybody gets the chance to do it differently. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay. like you said, we have that free will. So we don't have to be like our mother and father right from the beginning. That's right. And it's really important for parents to let children have that freedom. Mm -hmm. I remember in my very first psychology class as an undergraduate, the, I remember the professor said, um, you know, I think we'd avoid a whole lot of problems in life if we just threw our kids out on the street when they were 14. 
Um, and <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of good. <laughs> and there's a lot of truth to that. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> because we, uh, and, 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 and that's really the way life worked for a long time, was that mm. people were more or less grown when they were 14, because mm. the average lifespan ended at 31. Um, and, um, uh, but now that children stay with their parents until they're 18 or further, now that they go to school until they're 18 or 22, or 26, or 34, um, uh, now that that takes place, kids wind up being under the tutelage of their parents a lot longer. And sometimes parents won't let their kids be themselves. They want them to be exactly like they are. Mm -hmm. And that's a mistake, because things don't move backward. They only move forward. Mm -hmm. And what do you do if you talk with parents and they can't get over wanting their children to be just like them? I, I wish them good luck. <laughs> <laughs> and say, you're in for a lot of doom then. That's right, yeah. Mm -hmm. there, there are two kinds of mistakes that parents often make. One of them is that they are too rigid with their kids, and the other is that they're not rigid enough with their kids. Mm -hmm. And that the trick is to offer children a blend of the best of both worlds, mm -hmm. so that you establish firm boundaries and good values, and then let the kids take off with them and run. Mm -hmm. I agree with you 100%. And I love this book. I've got to pick up a copy. Dr. Ragusea, his philosophies are great. The one on love and marriage last time was perfect, and now this children one, it, it nailed it. So thanks for being back on this morning. <laughs> I'm going to take a quick break right now. I'll be right back after these messages. Stay with me.